Hello friends and neighbors, John your Whiskey Neighbor here and welcome again to my deck. Uh, it's a midweek video, so a little unusual for me, especially uh, with all the work that's going on right now, but uh, actually I wanted to reach out and talk to you a little bit about why I'm wearing a hat. I'll do that at the end of the show. It's uh, Hats On for Mental Health Day here in Canada anyways, um, and uh, we'll get to that at the end of the show. But it's a whiskey channel, so I thought I'd talk to you about uh, an American single malt. Uh, I got it on a ridiculous sale, and I'm so glad I did. This is uh, Stranahan's. Uh, it's from Denver, Colorado, and it is American Single Malt. So I'll tell you, this is just their entrance level uh, release. We'll tell you about it, uh, what we get out of the whiskey, when we come back. <music> As I said in that uh, disjointed introduction, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Stranahan's uh, single malt. Um, of course, I've seen this bottle on the shelf for a long time, and and I've seen a few reviews of this, or actually it might have been uh, some of their other releases. I don't know how many of the actual, just the standard yellow bottle um, releases, uh, reviews that I've seen, but it has been out for some time. Uh, I don't know enough about the history of, of how Stranahan's came to be. I did, you know, go to their website and you can see a great story about uh, neighbor Jess Graber going over and helping uh, co-founder George Stranahan um, put out a fire, or something like that, and so that developed a relationship. And then uh, they uh, went on to create Stranahan's um, distillery. And I also know that because... Boy, it's almost two years back. I did a review of Tin Cup, which uh, Jess Graber, one of the co-founders of Stranahan's, went on to form that whiskey. Um, and uh, and I shared those thoughts a while back. Uh, coming back to Stranahan's, aside from that nice story that I read on the, uh, on the website, I don't know too much about the history. What I understand about this bottle is, um, you know, it's a small batch and it's single malt. American whiskey. So, uh, you know, the, it's limited numbers. That's why they have the batch number on here and bottle number on here. Uh, and it is bottled at 47%. I believe it's double distilled, nothing but barley, and then aged in new charred American white oak for four years. So it's young, but it is new oak that it's been aging in. Nothing but malt, released at 47%. Oh, and it does say... Um, on here and I did read uh, that it is not chill filtered and I would assume it's not colored either so all of this good coloring is coming from those you know those new uh, barrels there are some fun things like here it says a uh, bottle number uh, distiller permit no that's all it says um, I watched a video about this a while back and at the time and I don't know if it's changed because it was a while back um, that they did their ba their bottling in, in also in, in in smaller batches and and they did it by volunteer and it was very popular like they would uh, obviously uh, compensate their volunteers with whiskey and maybe some some food or snacks and it became a thing to kind of sign up for the bottling and come out and do bottling for them. I don't know if they still do that. But I think that's a really cool history, especially when you're a small craft distiller. Oh, another thing I didn't read is, uh, you know, what's that? I only imagine, and it would be going back to my tin cup review, that it's a nod to, uh, because it's coming out of Colorado, um, that miners used to have um, a tin cup that they might enjoy some whiskey uh, at the end of the day, or perhaps on break, I'm not sure. But the point was uh, they used to keep a tin cup that they'd pour their whiskey into. I'm imagining that's this, but I actually don't know. So if anybody knows a bit about why there's a nice tin cup on a tall Stranahan's bottle, let me know. Better talk whiskey soon. The nose is quite rich. You know, it's uh, even when I poured it out here on the deck, it started to envelop um, the deck with, you know, strong caramel, light vanilla, a little bit of spicing. That's really most of what I get. Quite a bit of caramel in here. Uh, you know, it is a little young uh, by that. I, I mean, 
There's a little uh, ethanol notes, a little um, kind of high alcohol notes that I wasn't getting, like from back here, and like I said, it filled the room. I was getting oh, lots of caramels. Now, ah, a little bit of fruiting, a little bit of apple. Yeah, and, and some more alcohol uh, as I dig in. Hmm. Well, let's see how it tastes. Cheers. Quite a bit of flavor. It, um, it's got core cereal malt. Definitely expressive wood for me. Some oakiness to it. A little bit of spicing, uh, darker spicing for me, almost a clove. More caramels, a little bit of apple skin, clove, tiny bit of, of cinnamon. Fresh wood. Yep. Good wood quality to it. Finish is a little bit hot. Um, and somewhat drying, which is okay. Staying around, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tannic nature. The palette, and I have to say, I kind of rushed uh, after work to try to get the video, in, and this is the first whiskey of the day, and so... Uh, and you can see I'm not far into the bottle, so it's not, it's, it's right right in the, between that tasting and, and an actual review, because uh, it's been open for a little bit, um, but um, a little more bitterness in the longer finish there. Yeah, well, yeah, surprising. Surprising because actually when I first, you know, did a few pours over a couple of days when I opened it up, I was... Um, Enamored, it's not quite the right word, but very intrigued, very interested. So thankful I picked up the bottle. I'm still very thankful I picked up the bottle. This is good single, this is good young single malt. And, uh, and I would say uh, to all of the uh, Canadian craft distillers out there that are putting out, uh, you know, three, maybe four year old um, single malt, it's quite popular in a lot of craft distillers. Take a note from these guys in that look to, to look some fresh oak, some new charred American oak. I hate new charred Canadian oak would be fantastic. The point being, the wood notes really add a dimension to this uh, and really up the flavors. Plus, unchill filtered, 47%. I'm saying some good notes because I do still like those flavors. Sitting down here right now, though, it's a bit of a bruiser. And I don't remember that in my notes. I remember it being, oh, this is quite, um, not easy drinking, but, but you know, enveloping, coating, enjoyable, relaxing, a good sipper. And maybe it'll come that way. But I'm going to bring down my evaluation to only three and a half stars. I actually had pegged it at four before I sat down. So maybe it sits in that range. For some, it's gonna be exactly the notes you're looking for. For others, they might notice the alcohol in the nose or they might really pick up what I'm getting right now, which is a bit of a bitterness in the finish. And I really didn't get that the first couple of nights that I went at her. Would I recommend buying it? I would definitely recommend trying it. There's even a little bit of cocoa in there, some, as I said, some clove, a little bit of very ripe citrus, um, definite malt character, good wood. You can see there's, there's flavor in here, definite flavor. As I said in the opener, well, you can see, I'm wearing a hat. It's my dad's hat. And, uh, and actually, uh, I, I don't know what I wore last year, but I know that I shot an episode that talked a bit about mental health last year. At least in Canada, we have this day. It's Mental Health Awareness Week. 
where we talk about, uh, we try to talk about mental health, especially with students. I'm in the education sector. Um, and then on this day, we wear hats um, to really invite the conversation, or at least that's the way I take it. All of us have mental health. Um, you know, just like physical health. We have good health. We have poor health. I have to say, this COVID, uh, this pandemic isolation has reduced my movements and, uh, and has not been excellent for my physical health. In the same way, we all have mental health. If we're paying attention to it, you know, we're giving uh, uh, time for ourselves to unpack complicated days. Uh, giving ourselves the, uh, the freedom to spend time with friend or with activities that we enjoy that boost us up. Uh, we probably have stronger mental health, healthier um, mental awareness and emotional balance. If we're ignoring it, uh, just like if you ignore your physical health, probably not doing as well as you could. I encourage you, reach out to your local health authorities if you're struggling. In my area, that's Alberta Health Services. Some fantastic people there. There's Kids Help Phone. Of course, this audience would be more just uh, call the mental health line. And I'm sure wherever you are across the globe, there are people that are uh, waiting and willing just to be an ear, just to be someone who can help you out. Especially in this pandemic times where, uh, where we might be isolated from people that are normally our supports. Um, if you're feeling down, uh, you know, nothing wrong with a good drink, uh, but it's not a solution. So please, uh, please reach out if you need some help and support. You guys take care. Thank you.